Hello and welcome back. So today I had a conversation with someone that I've had a hundred times and it pertained to a patient who needed fluids and yet was hypertensive. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to make a video on this. And um, so let's jump right in. It's dehydration and high blood pressure, right? So how many times have you had this conversation? The patient is dehydrated and you need to give them some fluid, but their blood pressure is high. So someone is reluctant to administer intravenous fluids, especially, you know, crystalloids, because someone is hypertensive. So in order to understand the concept behind this, what you have to understand is that blood pressure is not a static thing. High blood pressure in the average person is not the result of having too much fluid in their system. In fact, in the dehydrated patient, administering fluid can actually lower blood pressure. So let's explain how, because that's a tall claim. It's all about viscosity. The thicker a fluid is, the more pressure it takes to move it or pump it, right? So your tap water may only have seven or eight pounds of pressure behind it, but it pumps more fluid per minute than the oil pump in your car. The catch here is that the oil pump in your car has 50, 60, 70 pounds per square inch to lubricate the engine, right? So how does this work? It's all about viscosity. So what do I mean here? Engine oil may be lighter than water, that's why it floats on top, but it's also thicker than water and thicker fluids take more pressure to pump, right? It's all about viscosity. Your body knows this. So when the body is depleted of water, the body will send out chemicals to increase blood pressure so it can move the heavy fluid around more quickly and increase perfusion. So of course it, it secretes vasopressin, right? Any diuretic hormone, which comes from the pituitary gland. And then of course, angiotensin, renin, and so on and so forth. This is not an endocrinology lecture, so I'm not gonna go huge into that. So the concept of dehydration here, we tend to think that dehydration and hypotension go hand in hand, but the truth is actually the opposite. Chronic dehydration is a huge cause of unnecessary hypertension, and this is everywhere. So dehydration can certainly cause hypotension, but just like in shock, and I mean hypovolemic shock, hypotension in the dehydrated patient is either a late sign or a sign that the body is failing to compensate for the lack of fluid, i.e. cardiogenic in nature. So a dehydrated patient that's hypotensive is not really a, quote, dehydrated patient, end quote. They're a hypovolemic patient. A patient should be treated similar, similarly to the way you would treat a hypovolemic shock patient in the case that your orthostatic pressures actually drop from lying down or sitting and, and standing, right? So people who are dehydrated um, long before the body loses its ability to make up for it. So this is kind of a, a big thing that you need to understand. The body can compensate for mild to moderate dehydration very well. Many of your dehydration patients will in fact be hypertensive because of the viscosity of the fluid, right, i.e. blood, that the heart is trying to pump, all right? So thinning the mix actually lowers blood pressure in most instances. And that's very important because it's very seldom that one would ever withhold fluids from a dehydrated patient. Um, make sure you understand your knowledge of pathology here. You're obviously not, not going to drop blood pressure by administering fluids to, say, a stroke patient or something along those lines. So let's look at a couple of cases where patients will receive fluids. All right, so let's look at the first case study. You have a 30-year-old healthy firefighter who fights an extended structure fire. Afterwards, he doesn't feel good. He gets dizzy when he stands up, so he comes to your station and says, hey, will you check my vitals? see what's going on. During the interview, he does admit to not hydrating as he should have, right? Of course, I know we've never heard of that happening before, but let's just say in this case it did. He didn't drink the 20 or 30 ounces of fluid he was supposed to in rehab. So your vital signs while sitting, you have a heart rate 104, you have respirations of 20, blood pressure is 140 over 80, temperature is 98.3, and your glucose is 71. While standing, because we're obviously going to take orthostatic pressures and orthostatic vital signs on someone who has this mechanism here. Uh, your heart rate's 138, respirations are 22, blood pressure is 138 over 74. So a minuscule drop in blood pressure, nothing huge, right? 
It's summertime, and this guy has just spent two plus hours in turnout gear working around the burning building. Does he qualify for rehydration therapy even though hypertensive? The answer is a resounding yes, okay? But he's hypertensive. That's the first argument someone's going to put forth. Of course he's hypertensive. His cells are drained of water, and the body is pumping a much thicker fluid around. In order to maintain perfusion, the pressure has to go up. That's just a matter of fact. So let's say you administer a liter of fluid. Your vital signs after the fact are going to be a heart rate of about 88. Respirations have dropped 16. And blood pressure is 118 over 60. You have decreased the work of the respiratory and cardiovascular system by lessening the viscosity of his blood, by thinning out the fluid, right? So let's look at the second case. You have a 30-year-old type 2 diabetic that stops her medication. Of course, after this, she begins to urinate a lot, and she feels terrible. After four days of this, she comes to you. She's pale and flushed. She feels hot and is out of breath simply from standing up. And let's talk about the, the pale and flushed here. So let's say she's pale in her limbs and extremities, toes and fingers, and she's flushed in her face. Very common, right, among diabetics. So on the stretcher, because you would obviously seat someone in this condition, the heart rate's 120, the respirations are 32, blood pressure is 170 over 100. That is not a typo, 170 over 100. BGL just reads high. So on the standard glucometer, that's five, six, seven hundred milligrams per deciliter of blood sugar. That's a high blood sugar. So the question is, does this patient need fluid therapy, right? Of course they do. When glucose rises above 200, the kidneys begin to, the process of removing excess sugar using the urinary system. Now this is going to lead to massive diuresis. That's going to lead to massive thirst, but without the medicine and with the polyphagia, eating a lot, right? Because there's, there's blood sugar in the system they can't use so that the body still says be hungry. The patient continues to eat and drive her sugar up while the body continues to try to expel the sugar. So she's losing a lot more fluid than she can possibly take in at this point. So let's say after a liter of fluid, your new vital signs are heart rate of 110, respirations are 32, and blood pressure is 150 over 80. Right? Why did the blood pressure drop? You thinned the mix. You thinned the viscosity of this patient's blood. Now, is the glucose going to drop? Not by that much. I know a lot of people that they run that protocol and they say, okay, I gave two liters of fluid and the glucose dropped uh, 10, 20 milligrams per deciliter, right? It's not about dropping glucose. It's about two big things. It's about giving the patient the fluid their kidneys need to avoid renal injury and potential failure and lessening the strain of the heart because it has to pump such a thick fluid. That's why you administer so much fluid to those diabetic patients who are dehydrated. So the next time you have a dehydrated patient, consider all the variables. And if hypertension is the only thing making you withhold fluid, Reconsider that based on pathology. Uh, fluid may very well be indicated. And in the case of someone who needs fluid, who has lost a bunch of fluid in, in the non-traumatic realm, they're hypertensive on purpose. Your fluid is actually going to drop that pressure. And with that, thanks for watching.